Amazon Go has been called many things, from the future of food shopping to a passing novelty. So far it has proven to not quite be either. Since launching half a decade ago, that's right it's as old as Brexit, it's been treated with cautious curiosity by the grocery industry, viewing it more as a tech demo than a threat to the very core of how they operate. That was until this year, which has not only seen Amazon open five stores equipped with the same AI powered technology across the UK, but two of the country's largest retailers launched their own rival versions of the autonomous checkout list stores. But cashierless stores are just the tip of the iceberg, acting as a catalyst for what could become the first paradigm shift in how people shop for food in decades. I think that them demonstrating the way that you know shopping and supermarket shopping wants to be done and, and is being done, um, I think is, is a huge, uh, yeah, it's a huge benefit for us, right? Um, I think that a lot of other retailers are now seeing this and they know that they need to make drastic changes, otherwise they'll, they'll become irrelevant. Cashierless, checkoutless, autonomous, till-free, smart shops, the idea has gone through many names since Amazon first popularised it in 2016, but the concept has been around for some time. Sainsbury's, the UK's second largest grocer, trialled its own version of a cashierless store in London's Holborn Circus in 2019. The store was open to the public for three months, doing away with all manned and self-service checkouts, allowing customers to instead scan and pay with their smartphones. However, the trial didn't quite go as expected. Sainsbury's was forced to scrap the idea after finding that customers were instead queuing at the help desk because they wanted to pay with cash or card. It said the experiment failed because not all of our customers are ready for totally till-free shopping. Less than two years later and things have changed dramatically. In July, Tesco, the UK's largest grocer, announced that it has been trialling its own autonomous store with its own staff for months and is set to open a second location to the public soon. Shortly after, Morrison's announced that it was also trialling a store with no checkouts or staff at its headquarters and would soon roll this out to the public. Meanwhile, Amazon has been aggressively rolling out stores equipped with its Just Walk Out technology to some of London's busiest shopping districts, firmly cementing the autonomous shopping concept in mainstream retail. So why the sudden change? Has technology advanced far enough that autonomous shopping is now palatable to the masses? Or was this purely driven by the pandemic? see a couple of forces at play. I mean, if you have a look at the world as a whole, right, we've become more concerned with things like cash, right? People are now demanding uh, checkoutless or, you know, cashless interactions. I would say on the other side, you know, you have the rise of things like gorillas, right, which is offering, you know, 10, 15 minute delivery. Uh, and they're starting to build these omni-channel pods, which are giving, you know, the end user the ability to uh, to get food really quickly, right? So they're starting to see a lot more competition. Um, and I think from that perspective, you know, it, it then comes to where they need to be spending the resource, right? And if you have a look at a supermarket, let's say here, Albert Hine, they've got thousands of supermarkets. They should be able to offer, you know, this 10 to 15 minute delivery, repurpose the back end, repurpose the front end. Um, so, and look, I mean, I just think that, you know, the other point is people are shopping more frequently, three to five times per week, you know, they, they're high frequency, they don't want to be waiting in line, the checkout hasn't really evolved, um, and so now we're getting a lot of this kind of this big push, this momentum, um, and yeah, I would say that it's all coming to a head now. With the threat of Amazon, notorious for radically disrupting industries on one side, rapid grocery delivery on another, and a huge shift in consumer sentiment driven by the pandemic, grocers are beginning to realise that they can no longer afford to rest on their laurels. Grocery retail is not known, or retail is not known to be the most innovative industry. Much like Tesla's, you know, push into the automotive, electric automotive world has caused, because, I mean, you know, GM, these massive automotive companies didn't have a problem doing it themselves, right? Creating, building electric cars. It's just Tesla's involvement pushed everybody a bit faster to care about it a little more. Um, and I think Amazon dive into the space just gave everybody a bit of a shakeup, right? Saying, okay, there's a big tech player coming in. Now we need to start really focusing on this. Fueled by the pandemic, 
which saw massive lines that saw retailers and all retailers wanted, grocery retailers wanted to do was get people in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out as fast as possible. Um, and so I think it is Amazon's push, but it did have its own fueling around it. Also, a lot of these retailers made quite a nice um, leap during the pandemic because of the revenues that a lot of them managed to create nice, um, let's say, pots to put into innovation. You know, we see retailers are a lot more inclined now to spend money on pilots and, and trials to try new technology than they did pre-pandemic. However, this doesn't mean that autonomous stores are about to become ubiquitous. There's still a very good reason why people consider these stores to be a bit of a novelty. Not only can these stores be eye-wateringly expensive, with the average Amazon Go store thought to cost a million dollars each, but the technology by its very nature is still in the learning process. Right, because Amazon Go, I had the pleasure of going to one in Chicago. Uh, I think it was like the third one to open. Um, you know, it's great, great tech. Uh, but it clearly has its faults, right? Uh, where every apple has to be individually wrapped uh, and you can't buy produce by weight because you're picking things and you still don't have scales at your fingertips that you can activate, right? And so a, a store that predominantly sells its produce by weight can't function. I, I live across the street from a Sainsbury local. My Sainsbury local, A, doesn't have any space. It's at the bottom of apartment building nor can it get the permission to build a server room big enough to run 3,000 cameras on the ceiling, have its entire staff repurposed to distribute products on the shelves with laptops and tape measures to see that the camera, you know, I don't see Sainsbury Local doing it tomorrow. And I don't think anybody at Sainsbury's thinks that, you know, tomorrow morning, all their Sainsbury Locals are going to become autonomous stores. That's why these grocers are almost entirely reliant on third-party tech firms like Edgify, Imager and iFi to help them integrate streamlined AI systems into their existing stores. Our customer is not the shopper, our customer is the retailer. You know, some of our, our, you know, our customers that we're working with have anywhere between 100 stores to, let's say, 10, 15,000. Um, when you have a look at the tech stack for something like a Go solution or a standard cognition, they build supermarkets around their technology. Whereas when you want to be able to scale, you need the technology to fit around a supermarket. Imger, for example, uses shopping trolleys which are equipped with four AI-powered cameras which can recognise any item you put in them without the need for a barcode. The system can be layered into retailers' existing POS systems and allow shoppers to pay via a smartphone app. Anything that is integrating in with their system needs to be relatively lightweight. Um, and those are the people that we interact with. They don't need specialist AI people. Uh, that's just not how we've developed the system. We've developed it to be white label. So our applications are white label, so they fit into the app. Um, you know, if you think about a retailer that's got scan and go, they already have a lot of the functionality that we require. Edgeify is based on a totally different model, which is weaved into retailers' existing self-scan checkout systems. Cameras installed in the self-checkouts will match images taken to items selected on the tills and train themselves to recognise every product in a store. Within a month, the system will recognise every item with near 100% accuracy, without the need to upload any data or install a server room in store. To put it in grocery retail perspective, because it's easiest to understand, if you tomorrow go to a self-checkout, you put a bag of bananas on the self-checkout, you go menu, fruit and veg, banana, right? All we need is a US, simple USB camera to see the banana, right? That's attached to the computer. And for you to have clicked banana, and now the machine has the image, has the label, because you've told it what it is, and it can teach itself. Even with these lightweight solutions, the transition to autonomous stores will not happen overnight. Rather, it will be a gradual step-by-step -step evolution. Fully autonomous stores, um, much like you don't see fully autonomous cars, um, that's going to take a long time. And the reason for it is it's just, it's such an overhaul of of, of the process. Um, I went to see the, um, the, I think it's a Tesco store, uh, right, uh, before opening. The staff has to walk around with a trolley with a laptop on it and a measuring stick to measure distance from a, from the bar, from the end of the aisle, and then they have to place the things and they have to check on the laptop that the camera is not in. 
I mean, it is such an operation. And that's for one store that's semi-autonomous, right? Um, you're gonna have you're gonna have some 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 issues with that. And so I think over the next 10, 15 years, we're gonna see a ton of innovation finally happening in retail, which we haven't seen in a long time. Right? So it's gonna be a real nice uh, uptick. But it's not gonna be autonomous stores. It's gonna be these these stepping stone solutions. The forces on retailers right now is too strong for them to view it like a, a slow burner, right? Um, so I think that in the in the you know short to yeah short term, it is going to be fairly mainstream because the technology is is it's moving so quickly. The ability for a lot of people to come in and start doing this is is it's there, right?